Hello and welcome along to Elizabeth's Craft Room um, for another in my um, autumn winter video series and today we're going to have a little look at these. Um, this is from the half full uh, stamp set which I am just loving. Um, so if you'd like to make some cards like this come and have a little look and see what we're doing. Right, so we'll take a closer look at a couple of these projects. So um, this one here I have done on um, watercolour paper and shimmery white and I've actually um, painted these in with aqua painters, blender pens um, and just added colour that way. And on the inside. And then this one here, which we're going to do a version um, of this uh, card today. Um, it's just kind of built up with various elements from the stamp set. So we'll go ahead and, and do a, a different colourway, slightly different version of that card today. So I'm starting today with um, Old Olive cardstock as my base card. And I've got a strip of Very Vanilla, same width as the regular card base. And I'm going to use the triple banner punch or banner triple punch to cut my banner. Just check whether that's the right length. It's probably a smidgen long, so I'm just going to trim that down. Smidgen is, of course, of course a technical term, <laughs> but just a little bit, <laughs> a little bit less. Now, what the reason? One of the reasons I'm actually changing the. Um, the stamping today on this one is I have got along the bottom of here the little wine glasses but you cannot see them at all because the card is so dark the the cherry cobbler that I've used there is so dark so, so I'm going to switch to old olive ink to go along the bottom and I'll just stamp my wine glasses in and as you can see they are super cute so you don't want to not stamp those they look really pretty. And while I'm doing it, let's just stamp a layer for the inside and just pop some wine glasses on there. And I'm going to stamp a, a Merry Christmas in there too. Okay. So that's the inside piece. Now for the outside, um, I want the I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas. up at the top and then we've got the but if the white runs out I'll drink red for me it's actually the other way around but <laughs> I do think it's quite fun <laughs> as a greeting on there okay so let's just glue that in place and you can see what I'm going for is kind of a selection of banners. Now, last time I did cardstock and a little bit of um, a speciality gold paper that's in the big catalogue. But this time I'm going to go for papers um, I've chosen from this set here, which is called Merry Little Christmas. And it's actually like a super set of all sorts of things. Um, so normally I wouldn't necessarily mix white and vanilla but for this project it's all supposed to be a little bit um, you know just a, um, just a, a little bit fun and so I'm not going to worry too much about the fact that that's not exactly matching and in building this up I'm just going to put some Tombow on decide where I think that looks nice. Obviously I need to, the reason I've done the stamping um, of the greetings first is I need to avoid the space where they're going to go. Flip that over and trim off. And then I'm going to have some other little layers going on there. So I've got a 
a spotty piece here and a black and white piece. Um, so I think I'll have that one there. The triple layer banner doesn't go down to this size, so I'm going to just trim myself a little banner end there. And then perhaps this little one here. The easiest way to trim if you don't have a punch is up in the middle and then in from the sides. It's the easiest way to, to get a fairly even finish on there. And I've just put my finger in the ink. That's why we have black aprons. There is a reason why stamping up demonstrators have black aprons. It means we can wipe our ink off <laughs> on our aprons every time. Right, let's flip that over and trim those two off as well. Right, now that all looks very pretty, but we now need to add our bottle of wine and our other greetings. So we've got a tiny weeny little stamp here for the holly. So I'm actually going to stamp that. It's an outline stamp to colour in, so I'm going to stamp that just here in the grey archival ink and add a little colour. I'm trying to leave a little gap on those berries which I failed to do last time um, to give a bit of um, oh, wrong green, change of plan. There we go. Just to give a little bit of shine on the berries. Right, okay, let's do the wine bottle. So two ways to do this because obviously with my, my other one that I showed you, I watercolored. So this is an outline stamp, but there's another way to do it. And that is to stamp on the color of wine bottle you want. So I've stamped that on some old olive, but I'm stamping again because I want the label to be in a different colour. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut the label out and a bit of fussy cutting is good for the soul. <laughs> we get very used to doing everything with dyes but actually it's okay to fussy cut. But what you can do you see is you can be a bit you can be a bit cheaty because rather than cutting everything, you just stick it on and then cut it all out at the same time. Um, the other thing that I want to do is to add a little gold piece for the... the top of the wine bottle. So I've just stamped that onto the gold. Now, you can heat set that, but I'm just going to leave it for a moment. By the time I've cut this out, it'll probably be okay to, to cut that. I do find with the archival um, inks, if you're a bit patient, they will, um, they will stay on a glossy surface, but um, ideally heat set them. I can actually go a little bit narrow on the on the top there because I'm going to stick the gold over. There we go, that's our white wine bottle. Okay. And then let's cut out this a little bit more carefully. And some Tombow under there. And there's our foil top for our wine bottle. Um, one thing I found made quite a lot of difference when I did this was to take a white um, 
marker, a white gel pen, and just follow down where some of that marking is on the bottle to give a little bit of a shine. And then it really does look as if the bottle is catching the light. Just gives it that kind of 3D look. I find um, the white gel pens are very good for that. Um, let's add a little bit more bling on this one. I added a little circle um, underneath, but as we're using foil on this one, I'll have a little go with this. Let's see how this works. So that's the everyday label, and we'll see where that's going to where that's going to go. It's a little bit bigger. That's that's going to be it. That's going to be it. Do you ever do that? Of just have something in your mind and it doesn't quite work how you think it's going to, but if you wiggle things around a little bit, you can make them work. I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back of my wine bottle. And right up at the top we need one of the little the new mini dimensionals. What would we do without them? How did we ever manage? I think that is the that's the angle that we want. So which colourway do you like better? Let me know at Elizabeth's Craft Room or down below in the comments field. I would love to hear from you and tell me what you think. I think I like the the white one, um, the white wine one, but you know, I don't know, the red wine one's calling to me as well. So anyway, thanks for visiting Elizabeth's Craft Room. If you'd like to see more, there's links down below and I look forward to welcoming you back again soon. Love.